Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold with an extra video update for you after the session 1st of September has closed. Look out now for surprises to the upside with price at support, a green daily candlestick, a multi day divergence between price and stochastics, which is oversold. At least short term, expect some upward reaction here. The Elliott Wave count expects a third wave up is beginning now at 1585. If we see a new high above 1330.01, then I would have some confidence in that expectation. Let's have a look at the Elliott Wave count first today. The main wave count first. Both my wave counts are identical up to this point here. Both of them expect a primary degree second wave ended here and a primary degree third wave began here. To see how that fits into the bigger picture, I'm linking back every day to weekly charts. The main wave count will expect that primary three is going to be longer than primary one because that's the most common scenario. I'm removing the target for primary three though because it's very close to the target calculated now for intermediate three. So when intermediate waves three and four within the impulse of primary three are complete, then I will again calculate a target for you for primary three to end. For now, let's focus on intermediate wave three because I'll expect intermediate wave four should be a reasonable interruption to the trend it should last weeks. Intermediate wave one began here is a complete impulse. Intermediate two is now a complete zigzag ending just below the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio of intermediate wave one. Intermediate two subdivides five, three, five. The five wave structure down for minor C can now be seen complete at all wave degrees at the hourly chart level and we've got a green candlestick here at the daily chart level. Now this could be a continuation of minute four or this could be the start of the first wave up within intermediate three. I have two hourly wave counts to look at those possibilities. If minute four is over here, then we have a short little fifth wave and we've got the start of a new upward trend. We need some price confirmation though. If minute wave four is going to continue sideways, then it can't move into wave one price territory above 1330.01. And so that's why a new high above that point would invalidate the idea of the fourth wave continuing and then a fifth wave down to follow it a new high above this price point would tell us that minor wave C should be over and we should be in a third wave of a third wave up at two big wave degrees. If intermediate wave 2 does continue any further then initially it should find very strong support at the lower edge of the base channel so keep drawing this one on the daily chart. Draw it from the start of primary wave 1 which is that low I think at 1046 back in December 2015 to this swing low here at 1200.07 back in June this year and then place a parallel copy up on the high of primary 1. The lower edge of this base channel if price comes down a little bit lower to touch it should provide very strong support. Keep drawing also these two channels on the daily chart and copy them over to the hourly chart. Let's have a look at the pink channel at the hourly chart level and the blue channel where the end of minuet wave 4 is this point up here and here we could have the end of minute 3 and a very brief shallow zigzag for minute 4 and minute 5 could be a complete 5 wave impulse. I'm not completely happy with the 3 wave look of this final 5th wave but sometimes gold's little waves at very small degrees don't always look perfect. It will fit on the 5 minute chart but the alternate resolves that problem so it does have a reasonable probability at this stage. If minute 3, 4 and 5 are over here then we could have had possibly a trend change at intermediate degree but we need some conf price confirmation of this before we can have confidence. Initially a new high above 1315.89 would add a little confidence that we've had a trend change but we need 1330.01 to be breached as explained on the daily chart before we can have reasonable confidence that we have a low in place. While price has not breached this confidence point the risk is that we could yet see another low before we have that trend change. If we see a new low below 1302.93 then this will be the alternate that I'll be working with. Either this or some different labelling for this fourth wave. Now at this stage it looks like we could be seeing a triangle continue sideways for minute wave 4. So far it will fit the restrictive Elliott wave rules for either a barrier or contracting triangle. All the subwaves of a triangle must be zigzags 
and one of them must be a, dub a more time-consuming and complicated double zigzag. If we see this downward movement as a double zigzag, now it has a really good fit and look at the hourly chart level. And so for that reason, that's why I'm labelling this as a triangle and looking out for the possibility that we're going to have another low before we get that trend change. If the triangle is invalidated with C moving beyond the end of A above 1315.89 then I would relabel my Newt Wave 4 as an expanded flat or a combination. Now those are two other entirely possible structures. I'm just not publishing those charts because it would make the number of charts unmanageable. Just understand that invalidation of the triangle does not mean Minute Wave 4 can't be continuing sideways as a different kind of sideways structure. That will only be invalidated with a new high above 1330.01. That's why that's such an important price point to tell us if we've had a trend change. And so because this remains possible and it's identical to the first hourly wave count in daily chart right up to the slow here, because this is possible we could still have another low when the fourth wave is complete down to a new low before we see a trend change. At the daily chart level this is the alternate. It's identical to the main wave count up to this point here. Now I've just moved the degree of labelling here up one degree. It is possible that primary three was over and so this means that the next wave up may not be a third wave of a third wave. It could be a fifth wave. But here primary three is shorter than primary one. Now that's possible. The core rule states a third wave can't be the shortest. That doesn't mean it has to be the longest. Sometimes a third wave can be shorter than a first wave and so, so that the core rule is met the final fifth wave has a limit of no longer than equality in length with the third. That limit for this example would be at 1477.77. And so what this tells us is if we have had a trend change and if we get another wave up, if it moves above this price point, then at that stage we will know that we're in the middle of a third wave and we'll be looking for a blow off top to end it. This fifth wave at primary degree to complete an impulse for a cycle degree A wave could also end with a blow off top. Gold does often exhibit swift strong fifth waves. It could end with a strong upward movement but it can't be longer than a quality in length with the third wave. At the hourly chart level the same two ideas apply, only the degree of labelling would be different, it would all be up one degree. Primary 4 may not move into primary 1 price territory below 1282.68. I'm not going over the weekly chart again in this video, I did that at the beginning of the week. Let's jump straight into the daily chart classic technical analysis. We've got a small green body with a long lower wick. That's bullish today. It comes on reasonable volume, but the volume is slightly lighter than the prior downward day. And so very short term with two days of downward movement and increasing volume, and now a day of upward movement with slightly lighter volume, short term, this little volume profile here is short term bearish. And so that's another reason why I'm producing that alternate hourly wave count. We could still have one new low before we get the trend change we're expecting. On balance volume is providing a weak bullish signal. It's found support at this yellow line, but the line has been breached and re-entered before by on balance volume, so its strength here was weakened. It's slightly strengthened again, but this is a weak signal. If on balance volume moves up, I'll be looking for it to find some resistance at the purple line. Gold ended an upwards wave on this day here, and on this day here entered a sideways consolidation delineated by resistance about 1375 and support about 1310 to 1305. During this sideways consolidation, price is moving sideways from resistance to support and back again, and each time it turns, we see stochastics reach extreme. Price reaches resistance, stochastics is overbrought, we see a downward swing, ends when price reaches support, and stochastics just reached oversold here. Here we have the end of an upward swing, and now we've very likely got the end of this downward swing, because Stochastics is oversold and now it exhibits multi-day divergence with price. Price has made a new low but Stochastics has made a slightly higher low. And so that tells us that this last little piece of downward movement for the last two days to new lows is weak. It would be very reasonable because price is at support and Stochastics is extreme to expect the end of this downward swing and the beginning of a new upward swing. 
ADX, ATR and Bollinger Bands are all telling us that the market is consolidating. ADX is declining, ATR is declining and Bollinger Bands remain overall pretty tightly contracted. And so with price obviously range bound we should expect an end to the downward swing and the start of a new upward swing. Now at least short term in terms of direction for the next few days that agrees with the Elliott Wave count. And so there's a reasonably, well there's still risk, there's always risk, but it's less risky to try an, an entry for a long position here with stops set a reasonable amount below the lower edge of support here. If price does move up at least for a couple of days then you'll have a positive position and stops can be moved up to break even or slightly above, eliminating risk hopefully quite quickly. RSI is not extreme and exhibits no divergence with price to indicate weakness. After a period of declining range and contracting Bollinger Bands it would be reasonable at some stage to expect range and volatility to again return to this market. Price will break out of this consolidation and what direction is it going to break out? Volume is telling us with these two strong upward days during the consolidation, the strongest days, volume is telling us the breakout is most likely to be upward rather than downward. That's all for me with your Elliott Wave and technical analysis for gold today and I hope that all of our members are having a most fabulous week.